Hello and welcome back to my beginner's guide for civilization for colonization. In the past couple of videos, we covered a lot of getting started and early economics. In this video, I hope to expand upon that uh, with a little bit more focus on settlement and development. Anyway, here we have our second um, offer of a founding father to join our cause. Twi two times as likely to get treasure from ancient ruins. Now, I generally decline this one for a couple of reasons. Number one is because uh, a lot of there aren't a whole lot of ruins. You know, it's a very limited uh, utility that this founding father has. It's not going to impact my game throughout me playing it. It's only going to work as long as there are actual ruins left on the map, and that doesn't last for very long. So once that is over with, this the usefulness of this declines completely. And also, the AI generally takes every founding father that offers to join them. So. Allowing them to have a few of these makes sure that they don't get the offer to pick up some of the really good ones that I want. So it's my reasoning behind it. Anyway, here we are in Europe, and we're going to, uh, yeah, going to get that lumberjack as well as spend seventy gold and hurry the master carpenter. And this is going to drastically incre increase our productivity in our main city because the lumberjack produces lumber at a highly accelerated rate and the carpenter produces production at a highly accelerated rate turning that extra lumber into production which will mean which means we can build buildings a lot faster ah and here is the founding father we were waiting for peter minuet has offered to join your cause he will Decrease the cost of recruiting units in Europe by 25% always except that one at least if you play anything like I do if We go back here. We can see it's down to 600 from 800. So it's really quite significant and uh, we can Yeah, we actually can uh, We can actually afford a galleon now, which I think I'm going no I think I might wait until we get a little bit more gold to buy it because in case I run into a tight situation I don't want to be pigeonholed into a bad choice we discovered another treasure and see what this treasure is worth 611 gold. So as you can see, uh, buying a galleon is definitely going to be a great return on investment. And I generally buy the ships rather than build them because it really, it takes a lot to build a ship and it's generally just not as effect, uh, not as efficient. It's better to actually uh, build buildings that will allow you to produce goods that you can sell at a faster rate. Ships in Civilization IV colonization are generally somewhat underpowered. I, I would say there's there are few circumstances that you could ju actually justify building them if you're serious about winning the game. But it's nice that you're given the option, I suppose. Okay, here is a very interesting event that you will come across from time to time. When you disturb a native burial ground and they ask you if you wish to search for treasure, this could lead to the AI uh, civilization, the native civilization that you violated here declaring war on you so generally since i'm just exploring with treasure units here i think i'll say no because i'm not interested in having them attacked and destroyed uh, so it's important to keep in mind you know while the game is actually quite safe uh, for you in general don't make bad decisions that will get other civilizations or the natives and other colony civilizations the european civilizations to declare war on you Okay, our first improvement is complete. The farm, as you can see here, the tile graphic has changed a bit as well as the productivity of it has increased quite drastically. Six tobacco now and four food. We can also build a road for 20 gold, but that's not important right now as we don't actually need a road to speed up our transportation at all. So I'm going to focus on building a lodge over here on top of this tile with a lot of lumber on it. Okay, our ship has come in, and you may, might be wondering why I'm not really focusing on building the dock. You know, the dock is taking a long time to build, and you might have noticed this yourself if you started playing the game. You thought, oh man, production takes forever in this game. How am I ever going to speed it up, you know? Well, the answer is you wait until you have units that are actually efficient at their job. Uh, so that's what we've been doing here. We've been waiting a lot. Now we can actually start ramping up production. I'm going to take the Master Lumberjack out of the merchantman ship and assign them to being a lumberjack it's making us 14 wood per turn as you can see down here we're getting uh, a total of 15 wood per turn 14 percent of that is from rebel sentiment but we're not going to focus on rebel sentiment much as a matter of fact we're going to move the free colonists over to the fish so that our city is not actually starving 
and uh, that rebel sentiment will slowly go down. And the reason I'm doing this again is because I have the two founding fathers that I'm really interested in. I think the two founding fathers that are the most important, I already have them, so I can start focusing on building economy in my city here. And the, secondly, I'm going to take the master carpenter and assign it to the carpenter's workshop here. As you can see, the duck will be done in one turn already. And even with the carpenter, master carpenter, making six per production per turn, we are still making an additional nine lumber per turn so we're going to be building the lumber mill improvement after the dock finishes now there really isn't a whole lot for my merchantmen to do at this point in the game other you know besides uh, either explore the map or transport goods from europe to the native american call uh, uh tribes so i'm going to be going back to europe i think yeah, because we don't have anything to sell currently. And I have found, you know, a lot of my early game depends on using the treasures that I find from, you know, burial grounds and stuff, as well as the gifts that the Native American civilizations give you to sort of bankroll my early expansion. Because as, as you can tell here, this city is not producing much. But once we get our economy up and going, I'm going to likely uh, build a city right down here, I think. This is really quite productive uh, overall. It would have a, it'd be making a lot of lumber or a lot of fur and then we can make coats and then we can also make cigars because of the tobacco up here but we're going to need to train our units more as i've met i've mentioned many times a specialist economy is key and i'd say first and foremost we need to find a native american uh, city that can actually train my unit to become an expert fisherman that's going to supply me with a lot more food but that's currently not going to be possible. So, you know, I would generally sail this ship back to Europe. And I can also buy the galleon now, I think, which I will do, 2,500. And, I'm, no, okay, I don't have enough to invest in any guns. I don't have enough gold to buy some guns. So I'm down to 323 gold. Like I said, you don't want to have too much gold sitting around because if the king asks you for gold, the more gold you have, the more likely it is that he's going to ask for a lot of gold. Okay, our galleon has arrived on the map, and we're going to first move it to New Amsterdam to start loading up the um, the treasure unit. So we completed our dock, and it means that we're getting an additional, let's see here, I'm looking for the dock here. Uh, water tiles have, make an additional plus two food for being worked, but they suggested a warehouse, which is not bad but we're going to need a lumber mill more. And unfortunately, this actually requires 30 tools and it's going to take us quite a while to actually build it. So, you know, it depends upon whether or not you think it is worth it. Like I might general, I might decide to pull my lumberjack out of here and help him produce it. Because once the lumber mill is built, everything will start being built faster because instead of three production per person assigned to the lumber mill, you get six at a base, which means that uh, the master carpenter, 12 per turn. And you can assign up to three of them in there. So as you can imagine, it really increases the pro the production in your city by a lot. It's a very important early game improvement. Although the war warehouse might actually be more advisable right now because it will increase my storage capacity in the city by 100. So right now the storage capacity for everything except for food is at 100 goods. Anything over that will go to waste. So we don't really want stuff to go to waste. And as you can see, I continue to make some ore here simply by the founding tile that this settlement is on. And with the warehouse built, I that storage capacity will be increased to 200. So I think we're going to settle with that instead. And after that, we're going to build the, the lumber mill. And it should be noted that the lumber mill requires tools. And you might be thinking, well, building tools is i could be building tools right uh i'm making ore and ore can be made into tools via the blacksmith house however it's just generally not that economical because you're not very efficient at this point in the game so i'll likely be buying the tools that i need until i can actually build up more of an economy that focuses on tool production you know generally focus on the things that are the most productive you know if you can turn that productivity into gold and then buy something that you're not so efficient in the specialist economy i guess that's the point here the specialist economy is king in civilization for colonization great so here we can build a lodge on this tile and that will increase the lumber productivity by one which is exactly what we need and i discovered more ancient treasure and more ancient treasure man this is a very rich start a lot of ancient treasure moving around the map. And the ancient treasure can be very effective at 
clearing much of the map, uh, much of the fog of war off the map, but they cannot visit the Native American cities, so you're going to be left out on any rewards that they'd give you from the city, as well as learning critical knowledge or critical information about what that city can train, because I really do need to utilize that so I can um, so I can train my regular free colonists into something much more productive. And also, you know, we're exploring the world because I need to find an, a site to expand to. Obviously, the island is not going to be big enough to play a game on. I'm going to have to expand to the mainland. And ideally, the mainland is where you want to start out. I think I've pointed that out before. Okay, now, I have the galleon in my first city of New Amsterdam. And as you can see, the treasure unit can simply be dragged right into it from that menu. Or you can load it from any other tile if the... If the ship is the galleon is adjacent to that tile. So here he's asking to trade maps. I'm not sure why he would do this because this um I, I generally don't trade maps, and I'll tell you why, because you're missing out on exploration points if you you know accept somebody else's map when you could explore it yourself and then get the exploration points. So no, I generally decline that. So I'm going to sail my galleon over here to start picking up other treasure units as they start to congregate in one area. You know, as you explore more of the map, the they become less needed. Now, apparently, if you have a seasoned scout, the odds that you will get uh, re more, better rewards are is higher. But in general, I found it's just better to claim as many treasures as possible rather than wait until you have a seasoned scout and then uh, then start exploring because the other AIs might beat you to it by that time. So it's better to be early than to be uh, late and then there is actually nothing there anymore. So an expert farmer is waiting for us in Europe. Uh, that was actually the best at the time that there was because both the petty criminal and the indentured servant are pretty much worthless units. Uh, the expert farmer can be useful, but currently my, you know, expert farmer is probably the least useful of the food producing units. The expert fisherman is by far better because it will be farming tiles or using tiles that would otherwise not be doing anything compared to tiles that can be farmed can also be used to produce luxury goods like tobacco or cotton that can be turned into that can be turned for a profit okay so we've completed our warehouse and now i'm going to start building the lumber mill and i'm also going to buy tools while i'm in europe because they're pretty cheap so i'm going to buy 200 tools and now um the incan empire is actually offering up this settlement of cusco which i mentioned they would do if my culture became predominant in that area and i it depends upon where the settlement is. If the settlement is outside of your immediate city's working tiles, I would decline it unless the um, the, the penalty is really big, like your, your way of life is threatening to ours. That, that negative trait is coming from the fact that my borders are really surrounding his. So if I accept the settlement, that will likely go away. However, if the, because the thing is, native settlements are actually quite useful because you can train units in them and you can also trade with them for for goods to make gold um so if they if they're without if they're outside your immediate city's working range i would leave them be unless the ai is getting very unhappy towards me because of it otherwise i would accept them giving me the settlement and there we go and as you can see once they give it to me it's completely abandoned which means i i can work this tile and since it is a tile with deer on it, I will likely build a farm on there and then get my expert farmer to work that to produce more food. So here you can see um, Simon Bolivar's settlement. He just has one. And as you can see, it's pretty modest. Much like ours, it is just starting out. He has built one farm. But other than that, it's one population in there and it's uh, pretty much a small, modest settlement. I uh, hear this city is actually going to be quite valuable to us. Uh, the capital of... Um, Machu Picchu. They are learned in the ways of the expert trapper, and I was the first to discover this settlement. So once again, I get a gold bonus for doing so, and I'm going to use that to produce expert trappers to begin trapping fur down here, and then I'll turn that into coats. And the thing is, you can't buy expert fur trappers in Europe. If you go here and then you to Europe and then you click purchase, there is no expert fur trapper. The only way to get these very valuable units is through native settlements. And in my case, uh, some, there's sometimes the games don't have all of the ones that you need. Uh, so it's actually quite nice that in this game, I, I have access to that, which is really going to help, uh, given my strategy was sort of set in the Tundra. And I don't want people to think that Tundra is bad. In this game, Tundra is not 
a negative. Uh, there is plenty of food around usually from fish and other seed-based resources, and the amount of wood and um, furs that are actually on tundra tiles are quite valuable for your other settlements. Like I said, generally, I accept open borders. There's really no reason not to end. Here, this is the king back again, asking me for 80 gold. I will spend it, but as you can see, if I had more gold, he would have likely asked for more than 80. So unless you're willing to refuse him, it's just generally better to not have much gold laying around. And besides, it's always good to invest back in your economy. It's better than having the gold sit around. It's not like it's going to earn interest or anything. Uh, if you ha don't have gold being used, it is simply an opportunity that is going to waste. Sitting Bull is another aggressive civilization, kind of like uh, the Aztecs. They don't like it when you encroach on their territory, and they're very prone to declaring war. Unfortunately, I don't. I can't build a farm on the deer because, as it turns out, it's not on flat land, and you can only build farms on flat land. So instead, I will likely build a lodge. There's really nothing I can build on here that would be that great, to tell you the truth. I probably should build a mine, yeah, because there's no forest on here instead. So four, it would increase it to five, and that way it gives me some. It gives me some options when it comes to mining those tiles uh, for ore. For what, it's just not going to be worth it for trapping, believe me. Okay, our ship has arrived in New Amsterdam with the tools. I will be adding the tools to my inventory, except for 50 of them. Because I don't have the space. And we now have our farmer, which I will be applying to the deer tile for a total of nine food per turn. So as you can see here, we're making 10 food per turn, and that means I can actually pull my free colonist out. And I'm going to take him down to become an expert fur trapper, I believe. So I'm going to educate him via the native city there. And as you can see here, the French have actually done quite a few improvements, and this is because they start with a, a hardy pioneer assigned to the pioneer profession, which is, like my hardy pioneer, twice as effective or can build improvements twice as quickly on the tiles around your city. So our merchantman has already arrived in Machu Picchu, and we're going to take our free colonist, and we're going to learn a skill. And this will take a few turns to complete, and the more times you use it, the more turns it will likely take. The extra tools, he will likely give me a good price for this, but I really should sell more than just 50. Uh, so I'm going to decline to sell him those and wait until I have more tools available, because once you sell to them, the price it decreases usually quite drastically. So it's best to sell in large increments when you're selling to the Native Americans. As you can see, our expert trapper after even one turn is 50% complete. So I'm gonna keep this ship here as I'll likely be able to bring him back relatively quickly. Yes, and our expert trapper has already been trained within two turns. Now it's important to keep in mind that different uh, Native civilizations have different traits. For example, he is, uh, the Incan Empire is prosperous and a mentor. And a mentor means that there's less time required to learn new professions in their cities. So the French have founded their second city. And I have not said so yet, but I'm planning on doing that as well with my expert fur trapper. And we've met another Native American civilization. Okay, now generally on tiles that have light forests, they should all be, the light forests should always be cleared out. Only under very extreme circumstances would I actually build a lodge on a tile that contains a light forest. It's much better to turn it into a farm and turn hills with light forests on and them into mines. So our master trapper has arrived and will likely be founding right here because we have a sea-based resource that will provide us with a lot of food. We have fur right here that will provide us with a lot of fur that we need to actually start to go into business for ourselves making coats. And we are one turn away from another immigrant and I'm, I really don't like any of these choices here, so I'm not going to bother hurrying any of them. The silver miner, I don't have any cities that can mine silver, so that's not useful to me. And these petty criminals and the indentured servant, if I get either of them, I'm much like the free colonist. I'm going to send them to the native settlements to train them because they have production penalties. And the I got the indentured servant, okay. I wonder what we have to replace them. The master weaver, not exactly what we needed. And see, the thing is, I generally purchase my specialized units rather than waiting for immigration because immigration is too random and I usually need, I have a specific need and it needs to be filled at a specific time. So 
building a settlement. Uh, we're going to name it Fort Orange, just fine. And, you know, despite the fact that there was no food on this tile before, once I founded a settlement here, it it turned into two foods. So you can found settlements on Tundra safely, and they will be able to, by default, the support the one population. And we're going to build a dock in that settlement, much the same as in the first one. And I believe we're going to buy some more tools now that we're in Europe. And I'm going to be taking this directly over to... See, I don't have any... I don't see any fishermen yet. And we need a tobacco planter and a fisherman. Those are the, the dire need right now, more so than a trapper. But it's likely we're going to be using a trapper, so I'm thinking we could definitely use another trapper. So the, the King of Netherlands has already decided to raise my tax rate from 0% to 5%. I could refuse, but then I wouldn't be able to buy tools from Europe anymore. Which, or I wouldn't be able to buy or sell tools. It's very unlikely that you would sell tools to Europe. But So it's important to keep in mind that the tax rate will increase whether you buy or sell to Europe. So don't just think it's selling and you're going to get away with buying. I'm going to accept this. 5% is... Not too significant, but it is higher than I would like. I would have preferred it just to increase by 3%. It doesn't always go up by 5%. That's actually quite extreme, I think. Okay, I found the first expert tobacco planter city uh, or village that I can train my units into an expert tobacco planter. So I believe I will be actually redirecting my merchantmen to go to that city because I need the expert tobacco planter more than I need another expert fur trapper. Okay, so our wood is starting to go to waste in New Amsterdam. This is because we have reached the like the stockpile capacity or the warehouse capacity of 200. So anything over that will simply go to waste. So I'm going to take my lumberjack and apply him to the carpenter shop in the meantime. Uh, in, until the lumber mill is done, then it should be less of a problem. And fur is also starting to go to waste in Fort Orange. Uh, we already have made 100 of it. So what I'm going to be doing is moving our fur trapper into a less desirable industry and he's going to make coats for now i'm not exactly sure that's the best i could do with him probably move him into production yes uh, and on second thought, i'll move him into a lumberjack make some lumber and then i will move him over to production once i have enough lumber stockpiled okay our first major improvement the lumber mill has been built in new amsterdam and as you can see here the building image improved and it now has three uh, unit icons. I can actually drag three colonists in here to work on it as opposed to two before and each one each citizen that I assign makes six. So in other words the expert lumberjack I'm getting six production from him and I'm getting 12 from the master carpenter. So as you can see I'm getting a total of 19 production in the city. 25% uh, from industrious so I'm actually making quite a bit more. Uh, I'm making a total of 23 instead of 19. So that is a, the industrious trait is a trait from my civilization, the Peter Sturve, Sturvescent, whatever his name is. Anyway, him and the Dutch Empire combined give me this bonus. I, I find the production bonus to be, in general, more helpful than the rebel sentiment bonus because you're going to be producing things pretty much throughout the entire game, whereas the rebel sentiment, for me, is just in the beginning of the game and then towards the end of the game when you actually went to declare independence. I find this more utilitarian. And now that we've completed that, it's time to select another building to build. Don't bother with stockade. Generally, you're not going to be fighting in your cities anyway. Don't bother with the dry dock because, once again, you're not going to be building ships. There are very few instances where it's better to build a ship rather than just buy one. But we are going to build a tobaccoist shop. Yes, indeed, because we have tobacco and we're going to start producing a lot of tobacco once we get our indentured servant trained up here somewhere right there it, turn him into an expert tobacco planter and i found my first uh, native settlement that has expert fishermen so this is going to be very important too as both of my currently founded cities need fishermen to supply food from the sea and that's why having the merchantman comes in helpful because it is the fastest cargo ship in the game it has a movement speed of four so you can easily move around the map much easier than you can with the caravel that pretty much every other civilization starts with, and the galleon, which has much more cargo space, but again, it's, only, it's the same speed as the caravel, which is a total of three. And in the meantime, I actually think I'm going to take my merchantmen and run back and pick up the fur out of Fort Orange so it stops going to waste. So another founding father has offered to join my cause. This one uh, reveals all tiles with burial ground, 
and a lot of tiles with ancient runes. As you can see, I've explored almost all the map already, so this is a big no. There are very few cases where I would ever accept him as a founding father, and again, the bonus to not accepting him as a founding father means that an AI will take him instead of picking a better founding father. You know, a founding father I might be interested in. And we found another village with expert fishermen capable of being trained in it, so that's, once again, it's good. So I've completed my tobaccoist shop in this city. As you can see, it's been upgraded to a, a building that can have three total units in it. But the even better improvement is the cigar factory, which in addition to six per citizen, six cigars per citizen working in that factory, gives 50% cigars for free. So this is a must have if you're going to be serious about producing cigars or any good, because that applies to all of them. If you're going to be producing coats, for example, it's important to build a coat factory because you're getting 50% uh, additional goods for free. And I, I like to fully upgrade to the best tier building before I start producing them in earnest. And unfortunately, I unloaded all of my treasure units. That was dumb of me, but it's not going to really affect my game any. Moving the fur out, and I'm going to be sailing the merchantman back to New Amsterdam to transport tools there because the cigar factory requires an additional 30 tools. So a lot of buildings in colonization require tools in addition to production to complete, and you're going to find that throughout this game there's going to be a lot of micromanagement, uh, managing resources, uh, you know, transferring them from one settlement to another to turn them into other resources and then transferring them to another settlement to sell them. There is going to be a lot of micromanagement of the economy in this game, and you can set up automated trade routes, but in the end, a lot of it has to be done by hand to really be efficient. And if that's not for you, if you don't like micro all that much, then this game might not appeal to you. But I personally, I am a big, a pretty big fan of it. I like micromanagement of economies generally, especially fun economies like this. So I've never had a problem with it. That was never something that would turn me off to the game. But I could understand other people perhaps not enjoying that because it's not as traditional a mechanic it, you know, from other civilizations, it's not something you'd necessarily expect the franchise to have in it. And uh, its colonization is very focused on economy, producing goods, converting them into better goods, and then selling them for profit. The combat comes into play much later in the game, real realistically. Um, and as you can see here, our expert tobacco planter is just a couple turns away from graduating. Oh, he actually graduated this turn. Okay, cool. So back to the ship with you. And then we're going to have to buy an expert tobaccoist from the docks here in Europe. And a master tobaccoist will cost me 900 gold. I don't have 900 gold yet, but once my ship comes in, haha, uh, the galleon, I have actually quite a few treasures on it. So that's actually going to make me quite wealthy. And I'll be able to afford a master tobaccoist, which means that we're going to boost our, you know, our um, production is going to skyrocket in terms of that, and that means that I can start producing goods that I can sell to Europe uh, to make a profit instead of you know relying on gifts from the Native Americans. So all good there. I think the economy is going as I planned, pretty much. So here we have a promotion. Unfortunately, I got this promotion quite a bit late, so I'm going to choose Veteran 1 and Veteran 2. Otherwise, with a scout, I would generally choose promotions that make me travel quicker across tiles. In other words, fewer movement penalties for heavily forested tiles. And our galleon is now completely full, six out of six units, so I can easily send it to Europe with a clean conscience that I'm not wasting any time. Okay, we're running out of wood here in my main city of Amsterdam, so I'm moving my lumberjack back over to producing wood. And this, again, is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about micro. You're going to be doing stuff like this all the time, unless you really rely on an automated system, but I've never found that useful. 25% defense this Founding Father is going to give me. Again, I don't find this all that useful since most combat takes place outside of settlements, realistically speaking. And the king is back, 150 gold. Take your gold, take your filthy money. So we're going to make quite a bit of money off of this. Let's sell it all. I have 4,000 gold now, as you can see. Fortunately, he did tax me for 5%. I wish I could have sold them before he actually raised the taxes. So that hurts a bit. But then we're going to purchase, I think, two master tobaccoists. Uh, yeah, two master tobaccoists and a master fur trader, I believe. The thing is, I could also go for another carpenter. I think I'll go for another carpenter instead. Yeah, because we don't actually have it built. We don't have our fur trading post built. And I probably want to get some other units. 
I'm going to think about this for a bit. Elder Statesman can wait until later. Um, we already have a high, hardy pioneer. You don't need to. Master Fur Trader is good. Uh, Master Blacksmith. I probably should get into Master Blacksmithing, truth be told. I think I'm going to buy one. And then I can start producing my own tools, which is going to be quite valuable in terms of saving money for constructing buildings. See, on that tile, they suggested that I build a lodge with my Hardy Pioneer. I disagree because it was a very poor tile when it comes to production of, I can't put all those tools in there, when it comes to production of lumber. It was actually better to increase the ore on that tile. Generally, the good that, that is most prominent on that tile should be the one you increase further. So in other words, on this tile, I have one food, two wood, two fur, and three uh, ore. And improve the ore because that's going to give you four ore total after it's improved. And then I get an expert miner. Expert miner makes 100%. Well, it makes double the ore, so I'm going to get... 8 ore off that tile. And I think that is honestly about time to call it quits for this episode. I did expand my economy a bit more. You saw me build some new buildings. You saw me pretty much explore the entirety of the map, as you can see right here. That is pretty much all of the new world right there. And then we're also discovering new cities where I can train units, uh, you know, regular free colonists, indentured servants, and petty criminals. Uh, cities I can train them for free in. I don't actually have to have a schoolhouse in my city and then sort of spend food on them every turn to train them. And once they're trained, you know, and some of the times there are very specialized training positions that you can't find within Europe, for example, the Master Trapper, once they're trained, you bring them back home and you put them in specialized positions such as producing tobacco, as we will be here with the Master Tobacquist. Now that he's here, He's going to be a tobacco planter in 12. Take a look at that. We're making 12 tobacco a turn just from him. That's really good. Um, and yeah, I expanded my empire a little bit more. As you can see, I have two cities now. Unfortunately, like I said, I'm on an island. That's less, that's not ideal, but we can expand over here onto this uh, piece of land. It should be all good, really. And remember, focus on quality over quantity. That, that's really what a lot of the game comes down to. If you have the choice between a lot of units or a few good units, take the few good units, it's going to turn out much better in the long run. And remember that it's you can't get rid of cities, so if you, make sure you don't found cities you're not interested in keeping unless you um, can get somebody to declare war and you raise them. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. I will continue this as long as I feel it is relevant. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching again, and I hope to see you next time.